Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we all shall continue to rejoice and be glad. And this is KD Sanders, Associate Pastor, Motivational Speaker here in the Metro Detroit area. You are watching KD's Inspire Word. Amen. An opportunity to share the real word with real people dealing with real seasons in their lives. And I am so blessed that you chose this opportunity to watch this brief message. And the message that I'm going to present to you today is titled, There is a Story Behind Your Praise. Hallelujah. There is a story behind your praise. Or you can make it personal and say, there's a story behind my praise. We don't just praise God just because, but each and every one of us, there's a story that has not been told to many of why you give God the praise that you give because of the things that he's done for you. There's, there's something on the inside that when you think about how far God has brought you, it just brings a mighty worship and a mighty praise out of your life. So stay tuned as we talk with a subject title, there's a story behind your praise. And I'm telling you, we're going to have a little quick three to four minute church break, amen, as we talk about the goodness of God. Stay tuned. <laughs> If you like this, how can God give you what you've been praying for if you like this? But you know what? Sometimes we're worried about the person that's sitting next to us. We're worried about what people are going to say when they see us. We're worried about, but guess what? When you go before the throne of God, it's just going to be you and God. I don't have to walk around with chains. Jesus said, I paid for it. I paid for it. You've been redeemed by the blood. In the praise, if you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. Here we are on another edition of KD's Inspire Word, opportunity to share the real word with real people dealing with real seasons in our lives. And as I told you before, we are going to talk on the topic title, There's a Story Behind Your Praise. Amen. Just when I think about that title alone, it does something to me. Let me first give a shout out to Sister Priscilla Shelton. Um, tonight at the Boulevard Church, we had a phenomenal Bible study. And um, we talked about one of the things that came up is praise and worship, which inspired me to do this message today, the power behind praise and worship. This powerful, powerful, anointed woman of God, um, what a beautiful job she did tonight. Um, and we get, came together and we prayed and we touched and agreed on the power of God. What a dynamic Bible study it was tonight taught by Priscilla. Priscilla, if you're watching this video, the anointing of God is definitely on you. Wow, what a powerful move of God. So with that said, um, so we're going to go real quickly. Um, turn your Bibles to the 103rd Psalm. 103rd Psalms. And if you don't have your Bible, I'll show it on the screen. Real quickly, all right, I want you to see um, this scripture and break it down, just a few scriptures, a few parts of it, of why there is a story behind your praise. When you bless God, um, there, there's something that you have to remember, amen. You remember where God has brought you from. You remember um, the storms that he's brought you out of, amen. You remember the walls that he's torn down in your life. When I think about the, the amazing, amazing things that God has brought me through that I thought that I was going to be killed in, the things that I thought I was going to be destroyed in. And here I am today in 2016, December of 2016, still giving God worship. This year alone, this year alone um, is reason to give God praise. Back in June, I was in a hospital, literally almost close to death, but, but God came through in a mighty way. And here I am today, would have never imagined in my physical mind that I will be even doing a video today, but God is so amazing. I'm back to my normal self and picked up more of my weight. Uh-oh, better watch out on that, hey man. But God is so good, hey man, because he takes us to those moments where we thought that it was over, when we thought that life was just done. And he comes back and says, I've done it before and I'm gonna do it again, hey amen. So the 103rd Psalms, let's read that together as it shows up on your screen, hey amen. It says this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget now of all of his benefits. Don't forget the things that he's done for you. Don't, think the ben don't forget about the benefit of being connected to this great God. Amen. Verse 3 says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy, thy, thy diseases. Amen. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities. God is a forgiven God. If you confess your sins, 
He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all of your all of your unrighteousness. Amen. You don't have to walk around with burdens. You have to, you don't have to walk around with heaviness. You don't have to walk around with what you did yesterday and last week. But we serve a God that when you come with a repentant heart and say, God, I, I come to you with a humble heart. Amen. With a, a spirit of repentance, Lord, asking that you forgive me of my sins. Amen. He's able to cleanse you, amen, and make your heart as white as snow. And he's able to heal you of all your diseases, amen. Um, the, the, whatever disease, whatever sickness is upon your body, whether it be upon your mind, amen, whether it be upon your physical body, whether it be um, upon your eyes, amen, no matter where the disease is, no matter where the illness is, we serve a God that has the power to heal, but you have to believe that he can do it, amen. Verse 4 says, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Amen. Um, the enemy's job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The enemy every day is plotting ways to kill you. Yep, I said it. The enemy is plotting ways to kill you. The enemy plots ways every day to destroy you. But the reason why you're able to make it from the morning to the evening is because God protected you from the destruction of the enemy. Don't think that you're so good. Don't think that you have made it. Don't think that you're so polished that you made it on your own will. But the only reason that we made it through even this day is because because God blocked the enemy's destruction upon our lives. You were able to drive your car from destination A to destination Z. I didn't say B to destination Z, amen, and you are able to make it safely, amen. You are able to make it throughout the day with all that is going on in this world, but yet, if you're watching this video, no matter how bad your day is gone, destruction did not take place upon your life. Why? Because that's the benefit of giving God praise. It says in a part B of verse 4, it says, Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, amen, the mercies of God, amen, the tender mercies of God, the beautiful uh, uh, opportunity that God watches over us, amen, that he protects us, amen, I, I would not make it without his grace and his mercy, amen, those things that we must remember every day without his grace and his mercy, I would not be here today. Verse 5 says, who satisfied thy mouth with good things. So that thy youth is renewed like an eagle, who satisfy thy mouth with good things. That means we better have something good to talk about, amen? When you open up your mouth, amen, start spreading some good news. I'm also, I'm, I'm starting to decrease on watching the news because it's a lot of negative news. And I said, God, it got to be some good news. Well, the good news is that God woke me up, amen? The good news is that I'm able to live and I'm able to breathe. The good news is that I have not missed a meal, amen? The good news is that my bills are paid. The good news is that I'm able to have a job. I'm able to have a roof over my head. Good news is that Jesus Christ, amen, is living in my life and he's working through me and around me and impact and change in my environments. Woo! That is some good news. And when you think about that, it says that it's able to bless your mouth to speak good things. Did you know that when we start to spread the good news and what God has done, amen, it becomes contagious and everybody start talking about the good things that God is doing in our lives. Amen. Then it says in verse 6, the Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. In verse 7 it says, he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts, unto the children of Israel. And verse 8 says, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Amen. So let's stop right there. Let's go back and understand that we serve a God that loves you as I close this. We serve a God that loves you. He loves me. He loves you. And when you think about the things that God has done in your life, there's a story behind your praise. We don't just praise just because. We don't do it because the music sounds good. Well, I hope not. We don't do it because we're just excited. But we do it because we say when we stop for a moment, even in the season that you're presently in, and say, wow, God, you brought me through that. Wow, God, you're able to bring me through this situation. You're able to heal me from that. You're able to lift me from that. When you stop and think about what God has done, then in your present situation, you say, you know what? Different situation, but same God. Different sickness, but same God. Different financial situation, but same God. Amen? Different chaos in the family, but same God. If you notice, I keep pointing back. We serve the same God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is not God who has changed, but it's we who have changed. How have we changed? We've changed our worship. We've changed our praise. We've changed our prayer life, amen? And when you stop doing things that's giving God attention, you start doing things that give the enemy attention. Well, how do we give the enemy attention? When we complain, when we stress, when we worry, and when we don't think that God is going to do it, the enemy gets excited. But I challenge you today. 
turn your tongue into a tongue of worry and stress and turn it into a tongue of praise and say that no matter what happens in my life, I believe that God is going to move. I believe that God is going to get me out of this season. I believe that God is going to heal my body. I believe that God is going to change my financial situation. I believe that God is going to turn some things around in my life. I believe that God is going to move in a mighty way in my life. I believe that God is going to heal my family in a mighty way. I believe that God is going to enter into my job and touch my co-workers and my supervisors. I believe that God is going to bring a revival to my church. I believe that God is going to touch our government. He's going to do a mighty thing. Amen. I believe that God is going to move because when I call upon his name, he answers every single time. You say, well, Kevin, why are you so excited about that? Because every time that I call on my father, my daddy, hallelujah, he answers in a mighty way. So with that said, brothers and sisters, there's a story behind my praise. I don't know where you are, but there's a story. So when you see this brother here giving God a worship and giving God praise, you better stop and learn the testimony behind it. And when you think about what God has brought you through, you can't help but say, God, I thank you. Because I don't need a rock to cry out for me. A rock didn't go through what I went through. A rock did not go through the hell that I've gone through. It was because of the grace and the mercy and the goodness of God in my life. Amen. I better stop right there because we're going to have church. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Stay encouraged and stay strong. Remember, there's a story behind your praise and don't ever forget that. Please feel free to visit my website at www right there, mvogministries.com or my Facebook at Kevin Sanders. I love each and every one of you. There's nothing that you can do about it. Stay encouraged in all that you do. God bless you.